Today is the very final day of Documenta 15, which has been one of the most uh, exhilarating, terrifying, brilliant, wonderful, horrible experience of my life. Um, and I'd just like to go through the top five highlights for me. Um, it's such a diverse and brilliant exhibition. You're always rediscovering it. Um, you're always making new friends, new connections. Uh, there's new literature being published. It's a very productive process. So it's something I'm still rediscovering and this won't be a definitive list. I think even for the next five, 10, 20 years, the collecting, archiving, uh, friendships, collaborations, uh, which we met right here in the city of Kassel. Uh, thank you to the German taxpayer and the German state for helping this wonderful global exhibition, which rightly has a reputation as being one of the most important events of the artistic calendar. So starting with who I thought was the standout, 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 standout. Um, and I'm going to go with the first choices. This fantastic. Ruru Kids was fantastic. Um, I wish it was one of the most central talking points. Uh, childcare is such a problem for artists, like, um, and how to balance a family life. Um, so this, this fantastic uh, installation by Graziella Kunsk, I apologise if I mispronounce it, um, I think we only met in Zoom, um, but really I just thought it was superb um, about the autonomy of babies and children. And when you went into Frederica, you, you saw it straight away, but it just struck me the sort of, um, yeah, brilliance and originality of that work. Um, and yeah, the, I mean, there was so much good work anyway, and how it coexisted, and even just flicking through this catalogue. Um, so I'm going to go with some friends next. Project Artworks, I, I think it's wonderful to see them here. I felt so happy that they got shortlisted for the Turner Prize. I actually wish they won it. Um, I, it turned out that Martin from Project Artworks was actually a ginormous fan of uh, my book, Shy Radicals, which you might know. Uh, if you saw the Aspergerstein Midnight Wings chicken shop, that's a reference to the made-up state in uh, Shy Radicals. Um, so what they're putting on the table is neurodiversity. And actually British institutions like Tate Modern are actually brilliant for um, realising uh the the institution the, the the concept of neurodiversity um for those who do not know what that means i guess it's looking at uh things which have previously labeled as pathologies and disorders such as autism uh, sometimes uh affective disorders um sometimes dyspraxia uh, but all these forms of neurological um disorders which uh, they sort of reclaim and view as a language, a different sensibility. So the onus isn't on the faulty individual, but on the social model or the um, society or the world. How do you make the world a better place? Project Artworks, I guess they're sort of in that place between carers, facilitators. So they help a lot of neurodivergent uh, people with so-called complex needs um, realise art projects. They're quite delightful to look at and, and, and they reconnect, you know, I'm going to say childish and I mean that in a good way, but that, that moment when you like know the joy of fell tips or drawing animals. Um, I was part of their project too. Uh, when they were shortlisted for the Turner Prize, I was part of a public event called Where is the Art? where I drew chickens on this, this method uh, in the Herbert in Coventry. Uh, that was a delightful event to be part of. And I'm I'm not sure how much it registered, but it's a great first attempt. I'm a neurodivergent person myself. I have neurodivergent members of my family. You probably have neurodivergent people within your community or your friendship network. And um, arts institutions, uh, everything from providing uh, quiet spaces, and there are many dotted around uh, Documenta. But Documenta still has a lot of lessons to learn. And I think Rangupa and the international dialogue could absorb neurodiversity and could also contribute because there's a lot of great neurodivergent books around the world um, 
and different languages and sensibilities. You know, my father was possibly a neurodivergent person, but as a Bengali growing up in post uh, World War Two world, coming to England in the sixties, uh, that was a different world, and hence his form of neurodivergence is far more integrated into uh, a different type of world that was then in the pre sixties world. Um, Hence, there was no need for pathology, but it could just be part of society. Um, I think that decolonial dialogue could open up more. Um, so I don't know how much Rand Grouper actually registered neurodivergence. There were far too many noisy rave parties, to be honest. Um, so well, I thought, what's the point of a quiet space when you can't even go to sleep in your own hotel because there's an 8 a.m. rave party right next to the door? And how distressing that is for someone. Um, on a particular spectrum where it's just the equivalent of having a face in your hand in your face you know like it's it's nonsense and you know thinking people who don't make eye contact or communicate in different ways are rude when actually that whole notion of etiquette excluded how they process senses um, what's overwhelming for them what's overwhelming for you uh, you need to learn these different forms of sensory processing in different languages and having project artworks they actually introduced my film as a preview event um in Ruru House and we did a double bill with the Shire Radicals movie uh, which you can find now on Nowness just type Nowness Shire Radicals you can watch it and it just works so well together I think they really introduced a really original film language and you know good luck to them and there'll be many future collaborations and also they were the other British artists they were a collective and I was the only solo one and I think there's um we could improve the British reception of Documenta um and so for the number three i'm going with another friend again sorry i'm by safta ahmed uh who did this uh fantastic metal album on islamophobia so we're two artists dealing directly with islamophobia and uh, zombie metal and indie culture and you know i made such the first friends i made was safta um we should make a zine library one day um and do i have one of these zines here um so he also um yeah having a zine there was a zine spirit though throughout uh documenta look at this makeshift way which i'm finding this and i think you know rangoop and make zine zine worlds the sort of amateurism was a good thing in some way because it opened up this friendship and open space so this was the zines they made the alien citizen um Again, a lot about the repressive aspects of migration law, racial aspects of migration law and borders, uh, and so on. Um, but the whole ethos and z of zines, I mean, one reason I was picked for Documenta is because I, I was involved in a, a zine festival for five years called DIY Cultures. And I was always asked by Rangoop when I met them, when are you going to DIY, DIY Cultures again? Are you still doing that? And we had, we had zine makers from Indonesia, actually, within DIY Cultures, which, which, which took place every year from 2013-2017 in London's East End and was a place um, that was, I don't like to use words, generally like diverse and globalised and internationalised form of zine culture. One of the best things I did in my life, but this was one of the zines coming out of this project. Um, it's also quite a nice film as well. That was number three, so I'm going to go number four. Number four is going to be... Um, I know this is very top fives and stuff. I could easily do a top 10 or a top 20. It's actually very hard to decide. And there were some other wonderful friends. So number two, I guess, is this guy. And you might know him from his singing. You can see what it says. Agnes Nor Amol. See, I don't know how to pronounce the name properly. You'd see him around Ruru House. And he's, you will also notice his singing. Bada bada bow, bow. Yeah, that one. The exhibition was fantastic, so playful, brilliant, inspiring, definitely one of my highlights, just as a solo exhibition as well. And number one is, da 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 da, can you guess? So the, to me the most important collective was Happy Chicken, which is just around Fredericum, which was an unofficial collective where I brought members of Rangrupa, the education team, uh, and the senior curators. And I also think the CEO should get Happy Chicken, because to me it was a meeting place with the excluded, black and brown, working class, Muslim people. And to me, that made my experiences. So number one, most important collective was Happy Chicken. Uh, the Arab um, halal fried chicken chain, just around the corner from Documenta. 
and that gets my champions medal.